It's the Bo Money Show, and I'm your host, Adam Bowen, coming to you on SteadyPicks.com, all access coverage of everything basketball. NBA, college basketball, the brackets are out, and March Madness is finally here with our special guest, USA Basketball Writers Association Hall of Famer. He's covered 25 Final Fours for the Philadelphia Daily News, and he's currently the radio analyst for Penn State Basketball and Westwood One Sports, the one and only Dick Girardi. He's going to tell you what number one seed has the best chance to go all the way. He's going to tell you what teams could be this year's Cinderella story. And most importantly, he's going to tell you the opening round game where Vegas got the line wrong. SteadyPicks.com. It's the Bo Money Show. <laughs> Welcome to the Bo Money Show brought to you by Steady Picks. Visit us online at SteadyPicks.com. You can sign up now to receive our free picks throughout the entire NCAA Me tournament. Only. Dick Girardi, Dick, thanks for joining us. Bo, how are you, buddy? Doing well, doing well. Listen, March Madness is here, the bracket's out. What do you think, what was your initial reaction when it first came out? Yeah, look, I thought Alabama was the right uh, team as the number one overall seed. I think they've had the best year in a very difficult league. They have the most talent, so no problem with that. I, I had some problems here and there with some of the seeding things, which I always do. I just think the committee needs more basketball-centric people rather than just numbers people, but that's a complaint I've had forever. That will not change. And if I'm in Piscataway, New Jersey, New Brunswick, I'm not real happy today. Rutgers got knocked out because they said they had an injury to a key player. I've never seen that happen before. If you earn your way in, you should be in, but they're out, and I know they're unhappy. Uh, but you know what? They put themselves in jeopardy, Adam, because they finished poorly. Right. You don't want to be one of the last four in, because if you are, you might be one of the first four out, because it's that close. And the other thing is when you just miss, you didn't have a great season. Right. If you had a great season, you wouldn't be worried about any of that stuff. And they really slumped at the end. Yeah. Well, North Carolina's another team that was yep. on the first four out. Yep. Um, they missed the first time in history that the preseason number one didn't right. make the NCAA tournament. Uh, they declined the NIT. Good decision, bad decision. What do you think? Yeah, probably a good decision. They just looked like they just wanted to get away from it all. They were the classic team that got hot for like a month last year, and it happened to be the right month. It was March, right? And all of a sudden they're in the championship game, and they look like they haven't won. And I'd never thought they were that good. I just thought they get hot at the right time. Yeah. And I think it proved that that was more of a fluke than anything else, because uh, this year they were average from early uh, November to early March and didn't belong. You know, it, you know, Adam, if they had been any other team with that resume, nobody would have been talking about them. As a you mentioned that they got hot at the right time last year. Yep. What about this year? Who, who's hot at the right time this year? Who's the hottest team? It seems like Duke is on the longest winning streak, yeah. right? Are they the hottest team right now? Well, you know, I mean, I think what's happening with Duke is that the young talent is now getting the experience they needed to show how good they were, and they're playing really well. Are you well. talking about Filipowski? Among others, Derek Lively from West Town, yep. actually from Belfont, PA, but played at West Town. So yeah, they're young guys, and some of their older guys who were good have gotten better as the year's gone on. And look, at, and John Shire's replacing Coach K. It's not an easy thing to do, and he's clearly gotten a sense of it. So they would be one of those teams. It's interesting, I mean, we don't have a single Philadelphia team in here for the first time in almost a half a century. So the team that the state's supposed to be rooting for is Penn State, and they are hot. They've they won eight out of their last 10, just missed winning the Big Ten tournament. I think they're dangerous because of the style of play, but they've drawn a different, difficult opponent in Texas A&M. So I do give them a chance to win some games uh, because of how they play, how they're coached. It's going to be interesting to see, and then, see how they do. And then if they do make it to the second game, they go from Texas A&M right. over to Austin, Texas, yeah, and play yeah. the Longhorns. In Des Moines, Iowa. In Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa. Won, uh, number two seed, 26-8 and eight overall. They yeah. won the Big 12 tournament. They blew out Kansas in the championship game. They did. As you touched on, Marcus Carr, Jabari Rice, and Tim Allen, their three leading scorers, are all seniors. Yep. Um, I do... I'm a little bit biased, but I do feel that they have a chance to go all the way. They are my favorite and pick. Uh, I like the senior-laden teams, but what do you think? Do you think? They absolutely have a chance. Look, they won the conference tournament in what we all would agree was the best yes. conference in the country this year, so that says something. They're playing well at the right time. Look, I, I remember play, watching Marcus Carr when he was at Pittsburgh. Yep. I mean, he's another guy that's been in school for a long, long time. time. He did Pittsburgh, then I saw him at Minnesota in the Big Ten. And now he's been to Texas for a couple of years. I mean, he's a terrific college player, and he isn't the only one they have. And so, yeah, they have the talent. 
Yeah, the, the interim coach should be the head coach. I don't know why they wouldn't hire him. He's done a ridiculously good job under difficult circumstances after what happened with Chris Beard. Uh, so, yeah, no, I think they, they're a two-seed for a reason, Adam. I think they are absolutely a contender to cut down the nets in Houston. Okay. Let's go on to the number one seeds. Who else, who do you like of all the number one seeds? You have Alabama, Purdue, Houston, Kansas. What number one seed, if you had to pick one favorite, one number one seed that you think has the best chance to go all the way, you're, what are you thinking? It's Alabama, I think for a couple of reasons. I think they're the most talented player. Uh, Brandon Miller is going to be the first American college player chosen in the NBA draft. Uh, and I, the style of play really represents how the modern game is played. They want to get up shots every 10 seconds. Play they get after you on defense. They want as many possessions as possible, which think about it, Adam, it makes a lot of sense. If you think you have more talent, you don't want to play slow down, right? right. You want to go fa as fast as possible. And, and I think Nate Oates has hit on the modern philosophy. It's threes or layups or free throws. Those are the high percentage shots. There's no, there's no, you, you can look at a shot chart for them. It's empty in between the three point <laughs> yeah. line and, and, and right around the rim. And they, and I'd say they go about seven or eight deep, just about anybody. They got a couple guys, surefire pros in addition to Miller. Um, so I think they're the logical favorite. Do you have a Cinderella team this year that you that you'd like that could potentially advance? I actually have four. What are they? First, Charleston. College saw, of Charleston. I saw Charleston live. Uh, Penn State was in that tournament right around Thanksgiving time. Talk about playing fast. Yeah, they, yeah <laughs> right? Pat Kelsey's team. They ended up winning the CAA tournament, and the CAA was very good this year at the top. Them and Hofstra had a gigantic long winning streak. Hofstra won the regular season. They're 31-3. and three. They play San Diego State from the Mountain West. Good team, but it's in Orlando. Charleston is not all that far. I suspect, and they have good fans. I think some of their fans will get there. I do give Charleston a chance to not only win that game, but possibly even a couple of games. Get to the second weekend. Possibly, yeah. Um, <coughs> Kent State is at a phenomenal under the radar season. Kent State. They play Indiana uh, okay. in a 13-4 thir game. I think they can win. Uh, I think the line is, is telling you something here. Indiana's a four seed. They're only favored by four points. Typically in a 4-13, they're going to be favored by a lot more. So the people that know these things know that Kent State is live in that game. Um, I thought St. Mary's hit the wall after they beat Gonzaga. I don't think they've played very well down the stretch. They play VCU in a 5-12 uh, game. I like VCU. I like how they finished. I enjoy their style of play. And as you know, my favorite college basketball coach, like since I've been covering, is Rick Pitino. I think he's the best that ever lived. If he had just stayed in college basketball, specifically if he stayed in Kentucky, I think they'd have like 10 more national titles because he had it rolling there. Iona getting nine points against UConn. Dan Hurley's done a really nice job. I like UConn. I like their team. But I think Iona's, I think Iona's live. They can win the game. Okay. All right. So if we're going to talk about where did Vegas get it wrong, mm -hmm. which is the question that everybody wants to know, what are the lines that you can bet on? All right. <laughs> Dick Girardi, he's going with Iona. Not only with the points, yep. but possibly the money line. Yeah, no, I think they can win the game outright. I think Rick is that good. And this is not, look, this is not an easy matchup. UConn's very good. They probably had the most talent in the Big East. When they were good, right. and like that game they got Villanova at the end of the season, they, Villanova couldn't do anything. Yeah. They just, there were too many good athletes on the floor against them. If they play like that, they're dangerous. But here's the difference. UConn has very little NCAA experience, their players. This is a, Iona's been in this thing. A lot of these guys yeah. have been in it, and the coach has a lot of NCAA experience. Lot of experience. Yep. Now, let's stay on the Rick Pitino uh, topic, yep. and the coaching carousel is going on. There's rumors about Pitino going to St. John's. It looks like it's close to being done. You think it's going to happen? Yeah. Maybe we don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's a rumor. I think it's reality. I think okay. it makes so every once in a while things make so much sense. You just got to do it, right? Yep. I mean, Rick Pitino grew up in, in Queens, not far from St. John's. He's a New Yorker. He, he lives on I don't know what hole it is, like Wingfoot. He doesn't have to move. Uh, St. John's is desperately in need of some juice in their program. Well, what more juice could you have than hiring Rick Pitino? Of course, coach the Knicks, coach Kentucky, coach Providence. I mean, he's just, he's been there. And the job, Iona was, was actually a pretty good MAC program, 
but he's made him into like a national program yeah. in, in a couple of years. So yeah, I think it's going to happen. Uh, Mike Rapoli is a big player, horse owner, vitamin water, big St. John's booster, Ian Ricker buddies from the racetrack. I think Mike's going to make it's sure gonna... that it's going to get done. I, I would suspect it'll be announced. 48 hours after Iona loses, whatever that is. Okay. Here's here's a question for you. Yeah. Is the Big East a high major conference, or is it there's certain programs that are high major programs, and there's certain programs that are not a high major program? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question, Adam. I, I would say it's not, uh, but there are programs in it that there have are. high major facilities. Certainly Marquette does. Xavier absolutely does with the Cintas Center, as does Creighton. Villanova, they're, UConn. Villanova, UConn, for sure. But there's others that are just they're trying to catch up, and I don't know if they're ever going to do that. Like St. John's, I mean, their own their home gym is just it, it's like a high school gym, right. basically. But I think the hope is that if Rick comes, instead of playing, say, four or five games at a garden, they're going to play them all at a garden you and think? start attracting. I think that's the plan. I would think yeah. that's the plan. Uh, but, yeah, it's not a high major league. It's a basketball-only league, uh, and it's really been carried by Villanova, which until this year, you could make a really good case over the last decade. Villanova was the best program in the country. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Two national titles, another Final Four, a Final Four in 2000, two other Final Fours. I mean, they've been great for a long time, and they carried that league. They, they were so thankful when they started that new league that Villanova was getting hot when it happened. Yeah. And speaking of Villanova, yeah. Jay Wright. Yeah. He's been out for a year. Yep. He's on. He's doing the March Madness yep. on CBS. Yep. Is he coming back? What do you think? What's, what's your What's your gut tell you about Jay? Is he done? I think he's done. I think he. I think he had gotten to the point, Adam. There was there was obviously nothing else to do other than company. just enhance a resume that already got him in the Hall of Fame. It's a tough grind. He'd been at it for a long, long okay. time. He just hit sixty. I think he kind of looked around and said, "Well, wait a second. Do I really want to be Jim Beheim?" Do I want to be Coach K, right. coaching into my 70s? I think he said no. Uh, he, he obviously left the program in good shape. This is an unfortunate year because of injuries and other things. It's kind of an unfair test for Kyle Neptune, the first-year coach. Um, but, yeah, I don't get the sense that Jay wants to come back. I think he's enjoying his life. He's got the CBS gig. It, when the games are over, he, he doesn't have to stew over who won or lost. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, you coached. It's hard, man. Yeah. I don't care what level you're coaching at. You take the result home with you, and now when he's doing a game, hey, I turn off the mic and you're out of there. <laughs> exactly. Head for wherever you want to head for. All right, so going back to the NCAA tournament yep. and, and the opportunity to um, make some selections for all the people in Vegas out there, one of the games that we want to look at is Miami and Drake, yep. which caught our, both of our attention. Five versus 12 game. It's in Albany, New York. Mm -hmm. Miami is only a two-and-a-half point favorite. Yeah. That's, it's saying something. What's it saying? It, it's saying that they misseeded the, the event is what they're saying. The <laughs> committee, which is why I've said for years, Adam, that I think they ought to have somebody from that does this for a living in the room with them to go, hey, guys, that's not a 5-12. This would be like a pickup game. I've seen 12s favored over fives. Right. That just tells you the committee messed up. But, yeah, here that Drake is only a two-and-a-half-point dog in, in, a, in what looks like a seed mismatch suggests, and, these, and again, the guys that do this for a living, they can't afford to be wrong, because if they're wrong, the people that they're sending out these lines to are gonna get buried, yep. and they don't want that because they won't have a job very long. Uh, so yeah, I think Drake, probably to win the game outright, is live in that spot. Okay, all right, and the other one that caught my attention is the 8-9 game, mm -hmm. Iowa versus Auburn. Yep. It's 6.50 at night. Auburn's only a one-point favorite in Birmingham, Alabama, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit of a, Pro Auburn crowd. For sure. I was, you've seen Iowa. I have. They're well coached. Very much so. And they have they have a lot of experience. They do have experience. They have tournament experience. They, they have Chris Murray, Keegan Murray's a twin brother. Of course, yep. Keegan was their star last year. Was a lottery pick, Sacramento Kings. Um, Iowa's offense is as good as any in the country. I mean, they really can score, and they got multiple guys that can shoot. They finish around the basket. But their defense is terrible. That's their problem. There are, like a lot of teams around, they only have one part of the game figured out, but they're trying to outscore you. They're trying to get to 80 before you do. Yep. Um, Auburn is not that kind of a team. It's not like they can't do it, but they're more of a grinding out. So I think that game's gonna come down to which style wins out. And the fact that it's in Birmingham, I would say is certainly helpful for Auburn. But look, Iowa won at Rutgers. 
which is not easy not to easy. do. Uh, so it's not like they're going to be intimidated by a, you know, it's essentially a neutral game plus a little bit of a favor toward Auburn because they're in Alabama. What, what do you think about the time of day, the games? You have some of these games yeah. that are, uh, you know, 12 o'clock noon right. on a Thursday, right. and it's a two versus 14 matchup yeah. or three versus three, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And and you get the potential for some teams to get off to a slow start and really bury themselves early. There's no question about it. And I don't, if I'm a team, I don't want to play the first game or the last game. Uh, okay. The first game, for you, just, you don't really have your legs under you. And all of a sudden, you're the first one out. And if you're the game at the last game at night, you've been sitting around for all day long until 10 o'clock waiting to play. That's hard. Yep. And, that, and these kids, they don't ever play that late. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm with you. That is a possibility. Sometimes the first game and the last game, the gym empties. There's hardly anybody there. There's no atmosphere. Yep. Maybe the, the team uh, that everybody wanted to see play is either playing in the second game, if it's in the afternoon, or the first game at night, and all of a sudden you're jumping it up and you watch people walking out. Yep. That's a little disconcerting. Too. All right. We're going to finish up here the Bow Money Show on SteadyPicks.com, your national champion. Probably Alabama. Alabama. Uh, nobody will be happy with it, but <laughs> I have a tendency to pick the team with the most talent, and they have it. And they have the most talent. And they have a pretty darn good coach, too. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's happy, done a really good job. Outside the box thinker in a world where you better be that. Yep. We want to thank our sponsors, the Newtown Athletic Club, for hosting us tonight. We have Dunkin' Donuts. Thank you very much, Dunkin' Donuts, for sponsoring the Bo Money Show on SteadyPicks.com. We'll be back next Monday night. We'll do a recap. We'll do a preview of the Sweet 16 going down to the Final Eight. And I'd like to thank no one more. Honored to be here sitting with you, the Hall of Famer, Dick Girardi. Thank you for being here, and Bo, we really appreciate your time. Bo, happy to do it anytime. Thank you very much. It's the Bo Money Show, SteadyPicks.com. We'll talk to you next week. Signing off. Thank you.